I keep thinking back to one of the first Kawasaki disease patients that I ever cared for, and she felt just awful. And her mother was trying to comfort her, and she kept saying to her mother, oh, I love you so much. Now I'm going to get teary-eyed again. I can't do that. And I thought to myself, this is just not a good situation because we don't know what's wrong with this young girl, and we really should. It's been a difficult 30 years of Kawasaki research. We've had some successes, but we've also had many failures. At a certain point, you ask yourself, why am I doing this? And it always comes back to the patients that you've seen and the families who've been affected. Initially, I was alone when I got this result. Um, at first, I thought it might be a mistake. So we did need to do more investigations to find out if that was true. I was in the lab at that point, and I believe I grabbed both uh, Leah and David and said, look at this. <laughs> This is the first time that we have had a real knowledge of what direction we need to go in. Ultimately, we'd like to make a vaccine to totally prevent Kawasaki disease, but in the meantime, we would like to have a really good diagnostic test so we know exactly who has the disease, and then we'd like to have really good specific therapy to cure the disease in patients who develop it. During this time period, kind of seen all the different possibilities for what can happen following Kawasaki disease. And most of our patients do very well, but we do have this small subset that have more problems. Even despite our best efforts, the child could be left with lifelong heart disease. It strongly influences you to get back over to the lab and work harder. Every child deserves the promise of a cure.